National Institutes of Health Stroke Scale, Wikipedia Article Audio The National Institutes of Health Stroke Scale, or NIH Stroke Scale is a tool used by healthcare providers to objectively quantify the impairment caused by a stroke. The NIS is composed of 11 items, each of which scores a specific ability between a 0 and 4. For each item, a score of 0 typically indicates normal function in that specific ability, while a higher score is indicative of some level of impairment. The individual scores from each item are summed in order to calculate a patient's total NIS score. The maximum possible score is 42, with the minimum score being a 0. Performing the scale 1. Level of Consciousness ALOC Responsiveness BLOC Questions CLOC Commands 2. Horizontal Eye Movement 3. Visual Field Test 4. Facial Palsy 5. Motor Arm 6. Motor Leg 7. Limitaxia 8. Sensory 9. Language 10. Speech 11. Extinction and inattention Usage NIS use in TPA eligibility NIS structure Modified National Institutes of Health Stroke Scale Accuracy Effect of stroke location on NIS prediction of stroke severity NIS is predictor of patient outcomes Other stroke measurements while administering the NIS it is important that the examiner does not coach or help with the assigned task. The examiner may demonstrate the commands to patients that are unable to comprehend verbal instructions, however the score should reflect the patient's own ability. It is acceptable for the examiner to physically help the patient get into position to begin the test but the examiner must not provide further assistance while the patient is attempting to complete the task. For each item the examiner should score the patient's first effort, and repeated attempts should not affect the patient's score. An exception to this rule exists in the language assessment in which the patient's best effort should be scored. Some of the items contain default coma scores. These scores are automatically assigned to patients that scored a 3 in item 1A. Level of consciousness testing is divided into three sections. The first LOC items test for the patient's responsiveness. The second LOC item is based on the patient's ability to answer questions that are verbally presented by the examiner. The final LOC subsection is based on the patient's ability to follow verbal commands to perform simple task. Although this item is broken into three parts, each subsection is added to the final score as if it is its own item. Scores for this item are assigned by a medical practitioner based on the stimuli required to arouse patient. The examiner should first assess if the patient is fully alert to his or her surroundings. If the patient is not completely alert, the examiner should attempt a verbal stimulus to arouse the patient. Failure of verbal stimuli indicates an attempt to arouse the patient via repeated physical stimuli. If none of these stimuli are successful in eliciting a response, the patient can be considered totally unresponsive. Notes Patient is verbally asked his or her age and for the name of the current month. Notes The patient is instructed to first open and close his or her eyes and then grip and release his or her hand. Notes
assesses ability for patient to track a pen or finger from side to side only using his or her eyes. This is designed to assess motor ability to gaze towards the hemisphere opposite of injury. This item is tested because conjugated eye deviation is present in approximately 20% of stroke cases. Said is more common in right hemispheric strokes and typically in lesions affecting the basal ganglia and temporoparietal cortex. Damage to these areas can result in decreased spatial attention and reduced control of eye movements. Notes Assess the patient's vision in each visual fields. Each eye is tested individually, by covering one eye and then the other. Each upper and lower quadrant is tested by asking the patient to indicate how many fingers the investigator is presenting in each quadrant. The investigator should instruct the patient to maintain eye contact throughout this test, and not allow the patient to realign focus towards each stimulus. With the first eye covered, place a random number of fingers in each quadrant and ask the patient how many fingers are being presented. Repeat this testing for the opposite eye. Notes Facial palsy is partial or complete paralysis of portions of the face. Typically this paralysis is most pronounced in the lower half of one facial side. However, depending on lesion location the paralysis may be present in other facial regions. While inspecting the symmetry of each facial expression the examiner should first instruct patient to show his or her teeth. Second, the patient should be asked to squeeze his or her eyes closed as hard as possible. After reopening his or her eyes, the patient is then instructed to raise his or her eyebrows. Notes With palm facing downwards, have the patient extend one arm 90 degrees out in front if the patient is sitting, and 45 degrees out in front if the patient is lying down. If necessary, help the patient get into the correct position. As soon as the patient's arm is in position the investigator should begin verbally counting down from 10 while simultaneously counting down on his or her fingers in full view of the patient. Observe to detect any downward arm drift prior to the end of the 10 seconds. Downward movement that occurs directly after the investigator places the patient's arm in position should not be considered downward drift. Repeat this test for the opposite arm. This item should be scored for the right and left arm individually, denoted as item 5A and 5B. Notes with the patient in the supine position, one leg is placed 30 degrees above horizontal. As soon as the patient's leg is in position the investigator should begin verbally counting down from five while simultaneously counting down on his or her fingers in full view of the patient. Observe any downward leg drift prior to the end of the five seconds. Downward movement that occurs directly after the investigator places the patient's leg in position should not be considered downward drift. Repeat this test for the opposite leg. Scores for this section should be recorded separately as 6A and 6B for the left and right legs respectively. Notes This test for the presence of a unilateral cerebellar lesion and distinguishes a difference between general weakness and incoordination. The patient should be instructed to first touch his or her finger to the examiner's finger then move that finger back to his or her nose, repeat this movement three to four times for each hand. Next the patient should be instructed to move his or her heel up and down the shin of his or her opposite leg. This test should be repeated for the other leg as well. Notes Sensory testing is performed via pinpricks in the proximal portion of all four limbs. While applying pinpricks, the investigator should ask whether or not the patient feels the pricks, 
and if he or she feels the pricks differently on one side when compared to the other side. Notes This item measures the patient's language skills. After completing items 1 to 8 it is likely the investigator has gained an approximation of the patient's language skills, however it is important to confirm this measurement at this time. The stroke scale includes a picture of a picture of a scenario, a list of simple sentences, a figure of assorted random objects, and a list of words. The patient should be asked to explain the scenario depicted in the first figure. Next, he or she should read the list of sentences and name each of the objects depicted in the next figure. The scoring for this item should be based on both the results from the test performed in this item in addition to the language skills demonstrated up to this point in the stroke scale. Notes Dysarthria is the lack of motor skills required to produce understandable speech. Dysarthria is strictly a motor problem, and is not related to the patient's ability to comprehend speech. Strokes that cause dysarthria typically affect areas such as the anterior opercular, medial prefrontal and premotor, and anterior cingulate regions. These brain regions are vital in coordinating motor control of the tongue, throat, lips, and lungs. To perform this item the patient is asked to read from the list of words provided with the stroke scale while the examiner observes the patient's articulation and clarity of speech. Notes Sufficient information regarding this item may have been obtained by the examiner in items 1 to 10 to properly score the patient. However, if any ambiguity exists the examiner should test this item via a technique referred to as double simultaneous stimulation. This is performed by having the patient close his or her eyes and asking him or her to identify the side on which they are being touched by the examiner. During this time the examiner is alternating between touching the patient on the right and left side. Next, the examiner touches the patient on both sides at the same time. This should be repeated on the patient's face, arms, and legs. To test extinction in vision, the examiner should hold up one finger in front of each of the patient's eyes and ask the patient to determine which finger is wiggling or if both are wiggling. The examiner should then alternate between wiggling each finger and wiggling both fingers at the same time. Notes The NIS was designed to be a standardized and repeatable assessment of stroke patients utilized by large multi-center clinical trials. Clinical researchers have widely accepted this scale due to high levels of score consistency. Consistency of NIS scores has been demonstrated in inter-examiner and in-test-retest scenarios. Clinical research use of the NIS typically involves obtaining a baseline NIS score as soon as possible after onset of stroke symptoms. The NIS is then repeated at regular intervals or after significant changes in patient condition. This history of scores can then be utilized to monitor the effectiveness of treatment methods and quantify a patient's improvement or decline. The NIS has also been used in a prospective observational study, to predict three-month outcomes of patients with undernutrition during hospital stays directly after a stroke. If patients scores a 3 in this factor, the default coma scores should be used when applicable. Default coma score, 2. The patient must answer each question 100% correct without help to get credit. Patients unable to speak are allowed to write the answer, aphasic patients or patients in a stuporous state who are unable to understand the commands receive a score of 2, patients that are unable to talk due to trauma, dysarthria, language barrier, or intubation are given a score of 1. Commands can only be repeated once, the hand grip command can be replaced with any other simple one-step command if the patient cannot use his or her hands, 
a patient's attempt is regarded as successful if an attempt is made but is incomplete due to weakness, if the patient does not understand the command, the command can be visually demonstrated to him or her without an impact on his or her score. Patients with trauma, amputations, or other physical impediments can be given other simple one-step commands if these commands are not appropriate. If patient is unable to follow the command to track an object, the investigator can make eye contact with the patient and then move side to side. The patient's gaze palsy can then be assessed by his or her ability to maintain eye contact. If patient is unable to follow any commands, assess the horizontal eye movement via the oculocephalic maneuver. This is done by manually turning the patient's head from midline to one side and assessing the eye's reflex to return to a midline position. If the patient has isolated peripheral nerve paresis assign a score of 1. If patient is nonverbal, he or she can be allowed to respond by holding up the number of fingers the investigator is presenting. If patient is not responsive the visual fields can be tested by visual threat. This involves the investigator moving an object towards the eye and observing the patient's response. If the patient is unable to understand verbal commands, the instructions should be demonstrated to the patient. Patients incapable of comprehending in commands may be tested by applying a noxious stimulus and observing for any paralysis in the resulting grimace. Default coma score, 8. Test the non-paralyzed arm first if applicable. Score should be recorded for each arm separately, resulting in a maximum potential score of 8. Motor arm assessment should be skipped in the case of an amputee. However a note should be made in the scoring of the amputation, if patient is unable to understand commands, the investigator should deliver the instructions via demonstration. Default coma score, 8, this is performed for each leg, indicating a maximum possible score of 8, test the non-paralyzed leg first if applicable, motor leg assessment should be skipped in the case of an amputee. However a note should be made in the score records, if patient is unable to understand commands, the investigator should deliver the instructions via demonstration. If significant weakness is present, score 0, if patient is unable to understand commands or move limbs, score is 0, patient's eyes should remain open throughout this section, if applicable. Test the unparetic side first. Default coma score, 2. The investigator should ensure that the sensory loss being detected is a result of the stroke, and should therefore test multiple spots on the body. For patients unable to understand the instructions, the pinprick can be replaced by a noxious stimulus and the grimace can be judged to determine sensory score. Default coma score, 3. Patients with visual loss should be asked to identify objects placed in his or her hands. This is an exception to recording only the patient's first attempt. In this item, the patient's best language skills should be recorded. Default coma score 2. An intubated patient should not be rated on this item. Instead make note of the situation in the scoring documents. NIS has gained popularity as a clinical tool utilized in treatment planning. Minimum and maximum NIS scores have been set for multiple treatment options in order to assist physicians in choosing an appropriate treatment plan. Tissue plasminogen activator, a type of thrombolysis is currently the only proven treatment for acute ischemic strokes. Ischemic strokes are the result of blood clots that are preventing blood flow within a cerebral blood vessel. The goal of TPA treatment is to break up the clots that are occluding the vessel, and restore cerebral blood flow. Treatment with TPA has been shown to improve patient outcome in some studies and to be harmful in others.
the effectiveness and risk of TPA is strongly correlated with the delay between stroke onset and TPA delivery. Current standards recommend for TPA to be delivered within three hours of onset, while best results occur when treatment is delivered within 90 minutes of onset. Since the NIS has been established as a quick and consistent quantifier of stroke severity, many physicians have looked to NIS scores as indicators for TPA treatment. This rapid assessment of stroke severity is targeted to reduce delay of TPA treatment. Some hospitals use a NIS of less than 5 to exclude patients from TPA treatment, however the American Heart Association urges against NIS scores being used as the sole reason for declaring a patient as ineligible for TPA treatment. In an effort to produce a complete neurological assessment the NIS was developed after extensive research and multiple iterations. The goal of the NIS was to accurately measure holistic neurological function by individually testing specific abilities. NIS total score is based on the summation of four factors. These factors are left and right motor function and left and right cortical function. The NIS assesses each of these specific functions by the stroke scale item listed in the chart below. The modified NIH stroke scale is a shortened, validated version of the MNIHSS. It has been shown to be equally, if not more, accurate than the longer, older NIS. It removes questions 1A, 4, and 7. This makes the MNIHSS shorter and easier to use. The MNIHSS predicts patients at high risk of hemorrhage if given tissue plasminogen activator and which patients are likely to have good clinical outcomes. The MNIHSS has also recently been shown to be taken without seeing the patient, and only using medical records. This potentially improves care while in the emergency room and the hospital, but also facilitates retrospective research. The National Institutes of Health Stroke Scale has been repeatedly validated as a tool for assessing stroke severity and as an excellent predictor for patient outcomes. Severity of a stroke is heavily correlated with the volume of brain affected by the stroke. Strokes affecting larger portions of the brain tend to have more detrimental effects. NIS scores have been found to be reliable predictors of damaged brain volume, with a smaller NIS score indicating a smaller lesion volume. Due to the NIS's focus on cortical function, patients suffering from a cortical stroke tend to have higher baseline scores. The NIS places 7 of the possible 42 points on abilities that require verbal skills, 2 points from the LOC questions, 2 points from LOC commands, and 3 points from the language item. The NIS only awards 2 points for extinction and inattention. Approximately 98% of humans have verbal processing take place in the left hemisphere indicating that the NIS places more value on deficits in the left hemisphere. This results in lesions receiving a higher score when occurring in the left hemisphere, compared to lesions of equal size in the right hemisphere. Due to this emphasis, the NIS is a better predictor of lesion volume in the strokes occurring within the left cerebral hemisphere. The NIS has been found to be an excellent predictor of patient outcomes. A baseline NIS score greater than 16 indicates a strong probability of patient death, while a baseline NIS score less than 6 indicates a strong probability of a good recovery. On average, an increase of 1 point in a patient S NIS score decreases the likelihood of an excellent outcome by 17%. However, correlation between functional recovery and NIS scores was weaker when the stroke was isolated to the cortex. Default coma score, 2, patient with severe vision loss that correctly identifies all other stimulations scores a 0.